Hey, this is Robert Dempsey with Axis Conference, and I am speaking today with Stephen Cotto, one of our excellent speakers. Stephen, how are you doing, sir? Great, great. Thanks, Robert. So, um, the first question is, man, what's your background, right? How'd you get into this game of software development here? Uh, so, I, I, I had a, a brother-in-law uh, that was a uh, developer, and, and actually really, really bright guy at 15, uh, hacked into Eglin Air Force Base. Oh. And uh, uh, he did a stint with the military uh, <laughs> at, at 18, mandatorily, uh, as a result of that. But he's, he was always a really bright guy and a, and a big inspiration to me. Um, uh, so seeing, seeing uh, you know, where he went with his career had a big effect on, uh, on you know, my own desire to go into software development. Um, uh, my, I guess, you know, when the web really started kind of... Uh, Making a difference in people's day-to-day -day life uh, around '97, '98 uh, was when I started seriously looking at, at getting into it, and uh, and just kind of came uh, as as a convert, you know, somebody that really believed in the web's ability to communicate. Uh, started out really simply, just doing HTML and JavaScript, and then uh, not too long after that, I got a job doing ASP and VBScript, and uh, and learned the hard way. Uh, what it was to write really bad code. Um, uh, moved from there into the Java world um, and spent a number of years uh, learning what it was to write really bad code with really big frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I think you know, that was where I started to feel uh, pain over, over uh, you know, people not caring about uh, their craft and uh, was actively looking for, you know, after a number of years, af actively looking for a way to improve that situation. And uh, in August of 2006, uh, a little framework called Rails was announced. And I heard people talking about it for, uh, uh, and actually, I guess it was 2005, wasn't it? So yeah, I, I heard people uh, talking about it for uh, a couple of months. And then in uh, October of 2005, I started looking into it. And uh, January of 2006, I got my first uh, paying Rails job, doing some uh, freelance work. Um, maybe six months after that, uh, I moved to doing it full time, uh, and I've been on the Rails ever since. Awesome! So you've been used and abused, and now you're a happy camper again. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and it's it's a uh, it's been you know really kind of a fantastic journey from uh, you know knowing very little to uh, uh, you know taking a lot of pride in my craft these days. Awesome. So, speaking of craft, I mean, what does software craftsmanship then mean to you? And then, how does your talk at Axis Conference tie in with with that? Uh, well, I I I think uh, software craftsmanship is uh, it's a bit of a, a loaded term because for you know for me personally, uh, you know it's that's the reason that's the reason why I do that. And you know, most people want to kind of uh, make the effort to. Uh, you know, write good code, uh, but but whether or not it's their craft or not, I think is kind of the deciding factor for me between uh, you know people people who who crank out code and 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 those that are that are trying to do something uh, you know that's going to be long lived. Um, so uh, I, I mean, I guess I would I would define uh, craftsmanship as just uh, taking pride in. Uh, and the code that you're crafting, realizing that that it's going to outlive you uh, if you do it correctly, um, and uh, you know, and and really trying to trying to apply you know best best practices and, and principles uh, all along the way. Um, and for me, it really just boils down to uh, uh, kind of a modernized application of of uh, XP. You know, like that's that's my day in day out is just uh, trying to do my best to apply. Uh, the, the great thoughts that smarter people than myself had. Right on. So then, how does your talk, this title, which is mm. "Tip of the Skinny Iceberg," then right tie into that? Then. So uh, one of the one of the things that um, you know the Rails community was big on uh, a, a couple of years ago was uh, the fat model skinny controller pattern uh, or you know approach uh, to to laying out your MVC system. Uh, and that had a big effect on me. Um, you know, it really, to me, uh, defined what the you know principle of single uh, responsibility and an MVC system uh, was. But you know, that really, ultimately, things 
kind of went a lot farther from there. And I think the thing that I see uh, and have seen over the last, you know, almost six years of, of writing Rails code uh, is that the, the trouble point in uh, Rails applications often comes in at the controller. You know, that's where uh, you start to see systemic failure in a complex software system in, 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 in NBC uh, happening in the controller. And uh, so it's, it's really a summary of, of you know, how to uh, properly encapsulate a system, how to, how to abide by, um, you know, a uh, single responsibility principle and, uh, you know, properly, properly lay out uh, a software system that's going, you know, that can potentially be uh, very, very large. Um, so yeah, it's, it seems like a lot of the ales start in the controller. And so that's one of the main things I'll be dressing. Uh, oh, sound went out. Oh, sound went out. Yeah, your sound went out for a second there. Ooh, nuggets. I got nothing. <laughs> your microphone doesn't like us. <laughs> Are you on a Mac? You got the built-in? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. That was weird. Awesome. Yeah, I think what it is is this thing's got like a loose USB or something. And... <laughs> it's all good. Uh, anyway. No, I think I lost you right when it said like um, where you said, yeah, and that's what it's all about. So I can edit easily into that. So. Uh, yeah, so what, what – I, I don't remember what part I said it was all about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, well, everything's all about everything. Yeah, no, because you were basically saying that the um, where the, the systemic issues seem to mm. really start in the controller, and so you're going to address like how to write good encapsulating code and whatnot in the controllers. Right, right. Or well, using using the controller is kind of the jumping off point for figuring out how to how to design the rest of your system. The controller is really where the rubber meets the road, if you will, for. Uh, you know the the whole MVC software system, um, so it's it's easy to make a poor design decision there that uh, cascades throughout the rest of the system. So uh, my talk will focus uh, largely on uh, how to how to make the right decisions uh, when doing outside in software development, uh, and and how to how to partition your system into uh, into proper encapsulated uh, objects. Awesome. So basically, that ties right into the. As you said, kind of the, the some of the best practices, ways of building software that's going to outlive you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's definitely my 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 approach uh, to software development in general is just to try and make sure that uh, you know that uh, the system's being laid out uh, using using you know very very strict uh, object responsibility. Um, you know, strictly thinking about the the the, the responsibility of a given object. Um, yeah, making sure everything's properly encapsulated. Excellent. Well, Stephen Caudill, I am looking forward to your presentation, as I'm sure many others are, uh, when you come down to Orlando uh, in October, late October, man. So looking forward to it, and thank you for taking the time to tell me about you know, your ideas of software craftsmanship and, and your talk. Cheers. Thanks, Robert. All right. Have a good one.